Tom and I had been camping in the woods for a few days, enjoying the peace and quiet of nature. As we sat around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and swapping stories, we couldn't have been happier. But our peaceful camping trip was about to take a terrifying turn. As we were talking, we suddenly noticed something moving in the sky above us. At first, we thought it was just a large bird, but as it got closer, we realized that it was something far more sinister. It was a thunderbird, a massive creature with wings as wide as a house and a beak as sharp as a knife. The thunderbird spotted us and let out a deafening screech before diving towards us, trying to peck us with its massive beak. Tom and I panicked and ran for our lives, with the Thunderbird hot on our heels. We ran for what felt like an eternity, our hearts pounding in our chests, until we were completely lost in the woods. We walked aimlessly through the forest, trying to find our way back to our campsite. After what felt like hours of wandering, we finally came across a park ranger. We told him that we were lost and that a Thunderbird had attacked us, but he didn't believe us. He insisted that it was just an eagle and that we were imagining things. He gave us a compass and continued on his way, leaving us to fend for ourselves. As park ranger patrolled, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He pulled out binoculars to try and spot the bird that had just flew above him. As he looked through the lenses, the bird was suddenly right in front of him. It was a thunderbird, and it was even bigger and more terrifying than the campers described. The park ranger dropped his binoculars in shock and ran away scared. On August 26, 2005 at around 2.30 a.m., my two cousins were driving back from Minot, North Dakota. They were taking the back roads to get home faster. About two, three miles from home on Country Road 7, they said that they were just talking and noticed on the left side in the northbound lane. A large, brown, hairy, seven, eight foot tall thing was standing there. They said that they were going about 5,055 miles per hour and slowed down a bit as they passed by it. My cousin tapped on the brake and in the brake lights they saw it. It frightened them and they quickly drove home. As they got to one of my cousin's homes, they went and woke my uncle and told him that they saw Bigfoot. Then they drove to my house and woke me. I them them that I didn't believe them. But they were both scared and shaking, so I knew that they saw something. We took two spotlights, a 5 million and a 3.5 million. My uncle had a 1 million power light also. We asked them to show us, in which they both agreed, after they calmed down a bit. We took my aunt's van and headed north. They showed us the spot, and I asked them which way do you think it was going. She said that it might have been moving west, so we headed westbound on Country Road 6, just north of White Shield. As we headed about one, two miles west from Country Road 7, we turned northbound on Country Road 5, as we were spotlighting in the cut wheat fields. I was on the passenger side, and my uncle was driving. We were both looking around with the lights. Then I picked up a bright red reflection of eyes. As I told my uncle to stop, I noticed that this thing was on all fours, moving west towards us. Then it stopped and seemed to sit down. It literally looked like a gorilla from the movies. As we stopped and sat there, we must have watched it for about four or five minutes. It seemed unreal to me, but as I started to realize that this is happening, and that we don't have gorillas in North Dakota, that is when my uncle noticed two more sets of eyes behind the one we were watching. My cousins started screaming and cussing at us to leave and to call the police and game commission. After that, we started to turn around and head back. I noticed it stood up. That's when I said, let's get game and fish out here. When I arrived at my house, my cousin called the Bia and they said they will contact the game warden. My uncle and I told my cousin to tell them that we are going to go back out there and wait for the game warden. My cousin's husband wanted to go with us. As we started to turn on Country Road 5, that's when we noticed a very strong, rank odor. We stopped, jumped out, and started to listen. That's when we noticed the truck lights on Country Road 6. It was the game warden. We flashed him down and talked to him. We gave all the information. He said that he would check the field out and left moving east with all of his spotlights on. That morning, at daylight, we started looking for prints. 
We found some impressions in the cut wheat field and ditch. The prints were 15-1-2 inches and about 5-1-2-6 inches wide. We stopped a BIA officer and told him that we found some impressions, so he took some pictures. The footprints pointed in the east direction. As we started to track them, we found three other sets that seemed like they were zigzagging around. After 30 minutes or so, we tracked it to a tree row where there were spots of cut hay put into piles and pine tree branches, two inches thick, snapped off. The sap was still oozing out from the break. There was no tall weeds around that spot, so we walked around and found a slough just at the end of the tree row, about 200 yards away. I was at Hope Snows, Torquay, Devon, England, and it was a very cold day. There didn't seem to be anyone about, which meant I had the whole place to myself. I had been visiting Hope Snows quite a lot lately, as I really do enjoy the fresh sea air combined with the smell of the pine trees there. I especially like the view from the cliff top looking out towards Thatcher Rock and the sea, where I often like to stand and take photographs. I had just walked down from the grassy area to the cliff when all of a sudden the surrounding sounds around me faded away, leaving the area completely silent, which was very strange, and really made the place feel quite eerie. I looked around, and then suddenly spotted someone standing down below over by the rocks. They were eating what appeared to be a ripped open fish, and I thought to myself that this was rather strange. There's really no way to safely get down there by those rocks. The only way they could have accessed that particular area was by boat, as it was just far too treacherous to climb down there, what with all the falling rocks. Whoever it was, they seemingly noticed me standing there, observing them from the edge of the cliff. They instantly looked at me, and then threw down the partly eaten fish. I immediately took a photograph of them with my Nikon Pan 900 camera. I could see that whoever it was, they were wearing some type of black garb. At first, I thought it was just a person, but then I saw its face. I almost lost my balance and nearly fell over the edge of the cliff in complete shock. I had never seen anything quite like it before. It really was quite hideous. It was the most unholy-looking creature that I have ever laid my eyes upon. It had wide-set black eyes with no sign of a nose. The creature then made a strange gurgling sound and then hissed at me in a threatening manner, which in turn made me shout out some profanities towards it while raising my fist in complete anger. With that, the creature ran towards the sea and dove into the icy cold water, where it then quickly swam away, disappearing down into the murky depths of the sea. I was completely shocked and horrified, as I really thought that it was just somebody mucking around trying to scare the ass out of me. But now I knew for sure that it was something strange, and possibly otherworldly. There was no way anyone could swim within the cold water, especially at this time of year when the temperature had plummeted to such a low level. They would instantly get hyperthermia and drown, so I really didn't know what to think. I had seemingly witnessed a real merman creature, and I was left standing there utterly astonished by what I had just seen. I thought to myself, this is utterly absurd, there must be a logical explanation. I continued to stand there for a little while longer, looking down upon the sea, wondering if the creature would resurface once again, but unfortunately, it never did. At least I had successfully managed to capture the strange merman-type creature within a photograph as proof. My life is very strange indeed. Who else gets to witness such peculiar things within their day-to-day -day life? I once thought things like this were complete fantasy, but having seemingly witnessed these bizarre cryptid creatures firsthand, I can safely say that they are totally real and definitely a reality within our generated world. The old tales from the distant past of strange mythological creatures appear to be completely true, which I find to be very exciting. Scientists should endeavor to study these weird, extraordinary events that have occurred over the years, instead of trying to cover them up or ignore them. Just because they don't fit into their scientific narrative, it does not mean these strange things do not exist. This incident took place at 4.4 p.m. on the 8th of December, 2021, at Hope's Nose, Torquay, Devon, England. 
I have an unbelievable story to tell you. Are you familiar with the Skinwalker Ranch over here in Northeast Utah? I have a close relative that is pretty much the UFO guy in that area. He's been telling me these stories ever since I was a little kid, so I've been out to that area several times. I was there in spring 2013 and nothing happened. We went around other ranch areas and there was no activity. The next night, on a Saturday, something did happen. What I later found out through my UFO relative. There were a few teen ute kids who were driving in a tall truck about eight feet high. They pulled up to the gate of the Skinwalker Ranch and parked there. They said that they saw an orb of light appearing above the gate. They turned on their lights and engine because they got scared. Then an even brighter light appeared and moved over their truck. Then something hit their truck. These kids got scared, so they hauled it quickly down the ranch access road to the main road. They stopped, I'm guessing, about three quarters of a mile from the gate. They got out to look at the damage done to this truck, and for some reason, apparently there are some girls with them. Well, once they got back in the truck, this is where it gets weird. A creature grabbed this kid, who was in the passenger seat, and pulled him out of the truck. It threw him around like a rag doll, bit him on the butt several times, and clawed him. Long story short, somehow this kid got back in the truck. They were able to get back in the truck, drove away, and then talked to the Ute tribal police. The tribal police say there's nothing they can do about it. So... The next day, which would be Sunday, they contacted my UFO relative, and he went down there to investigate. Meanwhile, there was a shaman and his wife there blessing the kids that were involved in this incident. My UFO relative said that he saw a photo on one of kids' cell phone of this creature. He also saw the damage done to the truck. Scratched into the truck was the word, die, and he also saw the injuries inflicted on the kid and the bite marks. Now that was very unbelievable for me to hear. The crazy thing about it is this. I work at a hospital. A few months ago, one of my patients was actually the shaman's wife who was present at time that my relative was there to investigate. She told me exactly what my relative said, but in greater detail. The creature that she described, and also what my relative said, had to be a tall creature because it pulled this kid out of this window. That's the eight-foot-tall truck, and this creature had horns and red skin. It had a human-like face, but the mouth was distorted, resembling short canine snout. It had claws and bat-like wings. I asked if it was a skinwalker, she replied. No, this is something totally different. I was around 11 years old and playing at my best friend's house, like we did every week. We were in her bedroom when her mom called upstairs that my mom was there to pick me up. We stood in front of the mirror next to the door. Between the door and the mirror was the light switch. I switched it off so that we could go downstairs, and then we both saw two glowing green almond-shaped eyes between us in the mirror. I know how that sounds, but it was really what we saw. We both screamed and ran downstairs as fast as we could. We were so scared. Our moms didn't really believe us, and we didn't do anything with it afterwards. After primary school, we grew apart, but I saw her a few years later and asked her if she remembered and had any idea what it was. She remembered and had no idea. I still think about it sometimes and just really want to know what that was. The room was pitch black. There was no one else there and nothing I can think of what that could have been. I would love to hear other people's experiences with this. For context, I'm female, 27 from the Netherlands. I kept seeing a shadow pass by outside my bedroom door, from the hallway leading to the bathroom slash kitchen areas, but I never gave it much though because car lights would come through the window and thought that was the cause of it. I was seeing it often and for a long time. Had a friend see it too, and I hadn't said anything to him prior to seeing it himself. It all lead to one day where I actually saw it, looking at me outside my door. At that point, I was around 14, was playing Frozen Throne on my PC, alone in the house, and it caught my eye again. Only this time it was right behind my door, halfway behind it like someone peeking in. 
I've seen videos where they supposedly show shadow people, but it was nothing like that. It was like a void slash darkness. Not darkness as in evil, without any features. It was actually hard to look at because it was like I could see through it, but not. I almost crapped my pants when it moved a bit, like it wanted to come into my room, but it stopped there. I did the cliché hide under my bed covers and didn't move. Not sure how much time has passed. It was a blur. But when I heard my parents and my sister coming to the house, it was like a huge weight has lifted off of my stomach. Years later, I told my sister about it, and she actually said she had seen something too. She was vacuuming our room one day when she saw a dark figure behind her. She panicked, and once she turned around, nothing was there. Thinking about it years later... It didn't feel threatening or evil, but when you see something you don't understand, you basically panic. I'm 37 years old unmarried. I don't have children. I live in an old ranch house. This began happening roughly two, three, not his ago. It didn't start off bad. I just heard something walking around my property, which isn't too weird as deer walk near my home often. Things began getting weird when late at night I would hear people talking outside my home. It was only a week ago that I looked out my window and saw a tall figure walking around my property. It had long skinny arms and legs. I couldn't see the rest of its body, but I'm not sure what that could have been. Last year, somewhere in Europe, I got up around 6 a.m., I was fully awake, freshened up, and opened my curtains. It was still dark out, however there were enough streetlights to see everything clearly. I looked outside and saw a figure standing with its back towards me. It was fully cloaked and hooded in white, and it wasn't holding anything. I would describe it as the Grim Reaper, in white. It was stood completely still facing towards a fence. My heart dropped so I moved away from my window only to look again to make sure I wasn't hallucinating. The moment I attempted to see what or who it was, it slowly turned around, but best believe I closed my curtains before I would encounter the sight of its face. I panicked, took a few breaths, and peeked in the slightest way possible, but it was gone. Literally vanished in thin air within seconds. I assumed it must have been a shadow person, but those can usually be distinguished easily. This human was way too vivid. It never happened again after that one time. Has anyone ever experienced anything similar? I was fully sober, not medicated. No history of mental. A few weeks later, I have a lucid dream. And when I have these lucid dreams, it feels like I'm waking up suddenly to a dream experience. The first was two auras approaching me in a void. I read the ways you were to defend yourself in threads about Gateway, so I immediately set out to project energy, make force fields, pretty much whatever random stuff I can come up with. When I felt like I didn't make much ground, I tried to meditate in my dream to either gain more energy, I don't know why I thought this, or escape. Well, after a brief period of quiet and peace and nothingness, I suddenly had loud static in my head, so violently that I jolted up. It was dark in my room, but I could somehow see with a greenish hue in the room. I knew something felt different. I didn't immediately realize I had left my body, but somehow I understand I needed to wake up for real, and once I did the room was dark again. After this was strange dreams, sometimes of things harassing me. When I first saw an entity I was dreaming, I was tossing out some bad mac and cheese. So overall, it wasn't too strange. But this is when I woke up hearing three metallic knocks. I looked into my closet and saw a ghoulish, smeggle-like creature. I was horrified at the time, but it honestly didn't seem to have much confidence or intent. It just sort of folded in on itself and disappeared. I'm skipping over several other experiences to mention my latest. I have done lots of research and still don't know what's fully happening. I dreamed I was being shown a room, and it was a picture of an alien. I noticed I suddenly had an unseen companion in this dream that would become the norm for the future, though I would never see what they looked like. I waved the picture out my face as they held it up, because aliens freak me out. 
I was led to the spot where I saw the entity and a light and vibration flooded the area. I was being suggested to look beyond that, but I refused and woke up. The next night, I began to meditate slash pray and ask for protection from these dreams. My first bad dream of the night, as I began to feel stressed, I felt a slap on my face. Waking me up, I went back to bed, rationalizing that maybe my cheek just twitched. The second dream of the night was from the perspective of a teenage girl arguing with her mother. The mother said the girls should talk to them themselves because they aren't bad. She then hands the girl a phone with the text if you want to talk to us. Just look up. I began to stress out again. Slight vibration, and then I heard a voice in my ear, not in the dream, saying hi there in a soft female voice. This made me jolt upright. Since then, I had multiple dreams with a woman in white. But lately, I've been sleeping with the intent of, I don't have the energy for these dreams, and somehow that has ended them for now. There are a lot of other things that have happened recently, but also it made me reevaluate things from the past. As a teenager, I did see a blue floating orb at eye level. My mom would see one as a child as well. I used to have problems waking up for school on time, so I told my mom she should just try scare me by saying there was a snake in the house. The very next morning there was. Manifestation. Neither of these things meant much to me at the time, and I brushed them off. But now I'm much more open to the spiritual world. I've always been open to the strange and paranormal, but recently I had an experience that was so bizarre, there's no doubt in my mind that it was real. I live in Big Rapids, Michigan. I have this friend Steve who loves to scour the internet for supernatural and conspiracy stuff. One day he came to my house all excited about something that he found on Reddit. To me, that was already a red flag. He said there's been chatter about a supposedly abandoned underground military bunker in the Huron-Manistee National Forest. <sighs> I never heard anything like that and just laughed at him. Friend tried to convince me into checking it. I was skeptical, but he showed me the thread, which even had pictures from the alleged site. Someone posted coordinates on landmarks in case anyone wanted to look for it. Here's the thing, there were also sightings of a strange creature in the area and people speculated that it was connected to the hidden bunker. I know your listeners are familiar with Dogmen. There's tons of stories on your channel about encounters all over the country. Michigan is actually known for its Dogman sightings, even in my hometown of Big Rapids. I've heard about it from some time from the old timers, but I've never seen one myself. The creature that people describe sounded a lot like the Dogman, basically a werewolf-type creature. Steve didn't want to go alone, and I finally gave in. As long as he treated me to an eight-corner all meaty from Jet's Pizza, the Huron-Manistee National Forest cover nearly a hundred thousand acres. Steve followed a map, and the coordinates took us up a trail. But then we took a narrower trail and went deep into the woods. I had no idea where we were began to worry. As we hiked, we heard rustling sounds nearby. I was a little concerned because there's bobcats and bears in the forest, and I'm pretty sure we weren't on any kind of official trail. I swore I smelled something too, like rotting meat and sulfur. It didn't bother Steve, so I kept my mouth shut. Then we heard something else. I don't know exactly what it was, but it sounded like a hyena, which would be crazy it was fairly close to. I said we should head back and that this was just a wild goose chase. But Steve insisted we were close, and even pointed to a large white pine with carvings in the trunk, that he was sure the Redditors mentioned. We finally came upon a small hill that housed a concrete door buried under a bunch of foliage. I couldn't believe it, and Steve had no qualms about rubbing it in my face. Still, I was worried about whatever animal made those weird sounds. Steve was only focused on one thing as he pulled open the door and went inside. I reluctantly followed. We used the flashlights on our phones to look around. It was mostly empty, except for some old beer cans. From the outside, you wouldn't be able to tell how big the place was. But as we went further, I realized it was a sprawling complex. There were several rooms, some with old dusty tables and cabinets and gurneys. It looked like a medical or a research facility. 
Steve took a lot of pictures. It's clear it hadn't been used in decades, but I couldn't understand how this place stayed a secret all these years. Steve said the Redditors thought the military did some kind of secret experiments during World War II. Me would have laughed before, but at that point, I thought anything was possible. He was intent on finding something that would prove those theories. But outside of some old rusted equipment, there was nothing. I was hesitant to go any further, as the place was a large labyrinth. Steve made fun of me, but then we heard noises somewhere up ahead. It was the sound of clattering metal, like someone was knocking things over. I grabbed Steve and tried to head back, but he shook me loose and called out to whoever it was, taunting them. I thought he was nuts. Then we heard it, that hyena sound echoing in the concrete maze. It grew louder, and for the first time that day, Steve gave pause. That's when we saw it. At the end of this long corridor, a massive figure emerged. The flashlight wasn't strong enough to get a good look, but it was definitely an animal prowling on all fours. It was huge, with stringy black fur and this wolf-like face. Steve took a picture, and when it flashed, a hyena laugh erupted from its throat as it stood up on its hind legs. That's when we saw that its upper body was actually human-like, with arms that put Dwayne the Rock Johnson to shame. This thing was huge. Maybe seven feet tall, Steve screamed, and we both turned and ran. We heard the creature galloping behind us, closer and closer. We finally made it to the entrance, slammed the door shut, and kept going down the narrow trail. As we ran, we heard that hyena sound again, and something in the bushes behind us. Who knows if it was the same creature from the bunker or another one. We finally made it to the main trail, but we kept going until we got to the car. Nothing followed us. We stood there in silence for a few minutes as we caught our breath. I had a hard time processing what just happened. But Steve burst into a wide grid. He was excited about what we saw and that he had proof to prove those conspiracies. Then the color drained from his face as he searched for his phone with all the pictures. It was gone. He probably dropped it somewhere in the bunker or the forest. I told him there's no way in hell we're going back. He got angry at me and demanded to know why I hadn't taken any pictures. All I could do was shrug. I got an earful from him as we got into the car and drove back. He kept his word, though. I enjoyed the pizza from Jets. Turns out I worked up an appetite after almost getting attacked by a dogman. A week later, Steve told me that the Reddit thread had been deleted. He thought our encounter had something to do with it. Like maybe the military was still watching that place. I thought it was for the better. No one should be snooping around there anyway. One of the strangest things happened to me last night as I was laying down for bed. My partner and I had done our nightly routine as usual, and even though I was exhausted, I couldn't fall asleep. I kept feeling like something was off, so I did another check of the house and have chalked it up to late-night heebie-jeebies from being up alone in the dark house. As I'm laying in bed again, I shift to my side so I'm facing our bedroom door, and I see a green light shining through the crack in the top of the door. Our computer sits right there, and the keyboard does light up, so I thought maybe I'd forgotten to shut it off before bed and just missed it when I double-checked. I get up to check again, and it's off. I checked TVs, made sure blinds were pulled closed, looked for anything that could account for it, and decided maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me. I turned to go back to bed and see our bedroom door is closed. I don't remember closing it, but I might have. I normally don't when I get up for short trips to avoid making too much noise. When I opened the door, our room was pitch black. I don't mean it's dark and no lights are on. I mean, I couldn't make out the shapes of furniture. I didn't see the light from our router or the light from our heating blanket cord. It was like looking into a black hole. Even typing this, I'm getting a knot in my stomach. After staring for a while trying to get my bearings, I decided to just close the door again. I got some water and convinced myself it was probably just an overactive imagination and insomnia. When I finally gathered the nerve to go back to our room, it was normal. Everything looked like it should. 
It was one of the more bizarre experiences I've had, as I can't figure out even a semi-logical explanation to explain it away. I don't have a history of hallucinations, wasn't on anything, had slept normally the night before. I'm not even on any kind of medication other than allergy at the moment. Hopefully, whatever it was stays away tonight. When I was around seven or eight years old, my friend Brooke and I were having a play date, and we were playing in the backyard of this abandoned mansion that is neighboring my house. We were sitting and playing together in the concrete patio when a window from the mansion randomly shatters. There was a baseball-sized hole in the window, and glass fell all around us. We freaked out and ran back to my house and told my mom what happened and wanted to bring her up there to show her. We bring her there, and I remember my heart sinking into my stomach when the hole in the window had disappeared, along with all of the broken glass scattered about. The window looked just as it always had. I remember my friend and I started crying and telling my mom we weren't lying, and it really happened. I remember being so frustrated that she would never believe us. Has anyone ever experienced something similar to this? I live alone in a strange house. It has a two-bedroom, one bathroom, and one kitchen with only one door in slash out. The bathroom is sandwiched between the two bedrooms and has a door to either one. The doors lock from the bedroom instead of from inside the bathroom. The kitchen runs the length of the two bedrooms and bathroom. I lived here with a housemate for a bit, but she moved out. I always keep my bathroom door locked. When we were living together, we would be hanging out in her room and hear my stuff being moved around. Upon investigation, nothing was moved and no one was there. After she left, I hear noises from the other room of things being shuffled. I don't go into the other room and I don't open the doors to it, ever. In fact, it is locked. Sometimes I hear two swift knocks on my bathroom door. It happens at random times and always happens when I talk about it out loud on the phone or to people I have over. This never happened when the other room was occupied. I don't feel uneasy when I'm in my room, but the bathroom makes me a little anxious. I visited Avebury with my dad and younger sister for the first time a few days ago on the winter solstice. We also decided to visit some of the other old Neolithic sites nearby, including West Ken at Long Barrow. Straight away, my sister wouldn't even go near. It was bright daylight as well, so we laughed at her and just thought she was being silly. My dad and I went inside and straight away, I started getting this awful feeling. Went back outside and the feeling went away, so I went back inside, but got the exact same feeling. It's hard to explain the feeling exactly. It felt really heavy and oppressive. Like something was pressing down on you. Made me feel breathless as well. Spoke to our dad afterwards and even he was like, yeah, that place was weird. And he doesn't believe in anything paranormal. He was there more for the history of the site. Not gonna lie, we went to Stonehenge and we were right up close enough to touch the stones, but felt absolutely nothing. No energy at all which was kind of disappointing. Avebury had good energy and felt really positive and welcoming. I would never go near West Ken at Long Barrow ever again. Just dark energy. I was probably 15 or late 14 at the time, mid-summer time. Me and two of my friends left a girl's house late at night. Basically sneaking out, she lived deep kinda in the countryside, about a 45-minute walk to get to the city line. We left about 2 in the morning, me and my two friends. We stepped out of her country subdivision road onto a main paved country road. We took a left onto the main road we look on our right. You could basically see just road and woods each direction with some mailboxes. But on the right side, our opposite direction at the top or end of our view on the road, we could see just a white light or reflector. Imagine. Obviously, that wasn't on our mind. Our mind was not being caught by cops or anything out past curfew. We walked left the opposite direction. As walking cars occasionally drove by so to be safe, we would hide in the woods or tree line. Every passing car, just in case, a cop. 
Every time we would watch a car go by our opposite traveling direction, basically, we would look back and the white object was getting closer quite fast. You could only see it in headlights once the headlights were gone. It like was basically gone. We continued walking all seeing it just confused but didn't care to wait. We got to about the town line this thing was probably only like 200-500 feet behind us again. Could only see it in passing headlights. None of the cars seemed to notice. When the creature was close enough, it has translucent white skin with big black hole eyes. Long limps looked pretty skinny, but still could have been anywhere between 6-8, maybe more feet. We get into the start of town with house subdivision streets, basically town homes. Every four-way we got to on our left, looking a four-way our opposite block street over. We could see the thing walking with our pace when I got a side view of it. Yet I noticed its arms hung down pretty low, it's like it was looking at us, but wasn't. Me and my friends that night weren't on any drugs and snuck outside at night quite a bit. So it wasn't just some fear or mistake. We were pretty, I guess calm or casual because it kept distance. We were about in town and more worried about ourselves getting caught by the law. To this day, I still ride my bike around town at night and have for years. Haven't seen anything at night like that since or before. I sometimes guess if it was just my vision, but both my friends saw it and definitely seen it three more times without headlights at opposite four ways. It was a gray kinda cloudy night, any help what I might have saw. The date was January 10, 2021. It was a cold night with a slight fog outside my hometown of Tonkanic in northeast Pennsylvania. Many nights I like to take long walks in order to clear my mind from the busy day. I walked on the rural road by this large patch of woods not far from my home. On my right is an old building with two small wooden houses beside it. As I'm looking, I notice movement. Then I see an eight to ten foot pale white figure briskly walk across the road from one of the houses to the woods about fifty feet from me. I know I saw something, so I quickly continue forward. Whatever it was, I wanted nothing to do with it, and I now wanted to get home as fast as possible. A minute or two later I look up. Again I see this pale figure that is now on all fours, but still five feet tall at the shoulder. It is about one hundred feet in the woods to the left of me. It had bleached white skin, a bald head, and huge black eyes. It had a human face and body, except it looked extremely emaciated, and its arms were like super long. It started to sway its body back and forth like a mantis. This is when I ran as fast as I could. I only looked back after I ran for a solid five minutes, and I don't believe it had chased me. I was very close to home, and I was concerned that this pale humanoid was lurking about so near to where I lived. I have no idea what I saw, but I know that it was real, not an apparition. I know that you have written a book about these pale humanoids. And I wonder if this may be what you described as a crawler. Thanks. Thanks for listening, fellow ghouls. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. See you tomorrow, love.